It just sounds like somebody just keep counting 20s over and over again. You gotta get your mind right yeah. and attract this money. So before we do that, I gotta ring the bell and let them know the black market is open. The black market is open. J-O-N, we got a very special guest in here with us yes, today. All the way from your neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah. Denmark, yes sir. We putting on for the Denmark Tigers today. Come on, man. Y'all fucking up. Oh. Oh, yeah. she hiding behind the sign. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Cover him up. He ugly as fuck. <laughs> Is it still in the shot? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, man. It's on the wide. Yes, sir. All right, well, welcome back <laughs> to the black market. We're getting our logistics work, worked out today. Got a very special lady in here with us, all the way from J-O-N's. Hometown. Denmark. Denmark, yes, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Denmark, Tennessee. None other than Miss Daphne Darcell. Yes. She got a book out. It's a devotional and a journal. She got her own sign. She she does. I got look, I got a whole two, three pages of shit that you do. Yes. So why don't you pick one of these cameras and give yourself a brief introduction, let them know who they dealing with today. Okay. Well my name is Dr. Daphne. I left the doctor out. Yes. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Dr. Daphne. <laughs> I didn't yes. know her. You didn't go to all that school for me not to call yeah. you a doctor. I apologize, yeah. doc. Yeah. Well, um, I'm just a, you know, I'm a servant leader. Um, I'm from Denmark, Tennessee, and even as a young child, I always, you know, just was a people's person, just love people, you know, grew up in church, and I always had a heart to just, you know, that care for others and just wanted to just serve, and I'm a fixer, you know, um, I'm a mother, community leader, you know, philanthropist, published author, um, just work hard every day and just help, you know, anyone that I can. I see you like mm -hmm. to help. Mm-hmm. Because you've been going into the facilities <laughs> and yeah. doing outreach yeah, and yes. rehabilitation. Yes, and yes. That's, that's kind of like my heart. How did you get started in that? Because I'm saying well, that you working up there. Yeah, the yeah. Like, um, I mean, a lot of people... Look at me and like, what? I used to be a warden in a prison. That's what so, I'm saying. Like, you yes. gotta have a hard side. You be yes. like, Jesus, and I'm so yes. sweet. Lock the damn set! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it might be another side, you know, to me when I have to be, but. I, don't, I, I can't see you as being an authority figure. It's, though. it's there, trust me. Wow. It's there. It's there. But, um,. I, but I was that, I was the warden that more so would talk, try to see what the problem was to make sure that everybody was getting the necessary things that they needed to get, you know, because I mean, it's not for us to judge them. They already, you know, in prison. So we just need to make sure that they get the tools that they need to rehabilitate themselves, you know, because mm -hmm. once they get out, they're going to be our neighbors, you know, their kids going to be going to school with our kids. So we need to make sure that, you know, they get everything that they need. That's what's up. So, yeah. How did you get started in, into that? Well, it's crazy how it started because I was an elementary school teacher, right? Exactly. And so... That's the same job, though, yeah, if you think about it. It really is. It really is. <laughs> it really is. But I started because I just um, was kind of bored over the summer. Um, and so I had a friend that worked in the prison. And so that's kind of how I got started. They had a position that opened up, and I was a, like a GED instructor. I started teaching within the prison system, and when I went in, I just kind of worked my way on up. I've been, you know, probably every position there is. And, I, I and don't ever want to be bored enough to go work <laughs> in prison. You know, just go, go to prison but every you know, day? But, you know, I, um, it's crazy because growing up, I used to want to be a police officer. And so I watch, and even today, I still watch crime shows, investigative shows, like I, I can figure it out. And even inside of the prison, like I would 
I could do that, you know, like I was the person that, you know, I would still be very active because I would still go and do sales searches. I would still go to the pods. I go to the chow hall, sit down and talk. You know, I was, I was, I was sit down very. And talk. I thought you was about to say eat. Yeah. I was like, yeah. you know what? No, 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 no. I ain't gonna eat. You know, maybe on my birthday, it make a cake, and I might get a little, little, little corner piece and taste it or something. You know, but, but that's my heart. I um, had a lot of family members that you know, cousins that did you know drugs, fed time because Denmark, you know, a lot of. The Denmark boys, you know, they, you know, they chose the, you know, the street life. And so I had a lot of family. So I. I that's why I stayed on him and yeah. Craig so hard. So they <laughs> didn't fall into them streets. Yeah. And so that's kind of how <clears throat> me and Pat, I know he was just with y'all uh, in Memphis on, over the man, weekend. Like, <laughs> you know, Project Pat is yes. my top five. Yes. Come on. Yes. Man. Well, that's that's my brother. Like we 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 go and serve together. So how we met is. I was, you know, in the prison and he wanted to start coming inside the prison. So got a friend that like connected us and we've been moving ever since. Like so we you actually was plug on all the prisons. You know. What I was, was that job? then. What anyway. was that job like for you? Being in the prison? Yeah. Um, it was I can say it was very rewarding. Yeah. You know, because even now I have seen several ladies that have gotten out. And they be one baker like I'd be like, well, look back, like who is that? You know, but it's rewarding to see them, you know, doing well. And actually, um, I was on a panel a few weeks ago. Actually, Pat was on that panel as well, um, and we was actually on the panel with one of the uh, previous previously incarcerated ladies was on the panel with us. Mm -hmm. And so, and she told the story of altercation, you know, that that her and I had had of her wanting to not like that, but you know, she wanted me to like help her, you know, get a, I think it was like a room change, a cell change or something, and, and she was high, so, you know, and I'm like, get yourself together, you know, and then I, I'll, I'll help you do whatever it is, you know, you need to do, but, but we need to work on some things. what if you need to move things. while you high? That might be the only time you're in the mood to pack your shit and you, go you, upstairs. You, you got a point, but you know, Look, it's, man, it's, I'm too high <laughs> up here. They getting me high. That's why I need to move. <laughs> It, it was a lot of inside stuff that you know I I, I won't share, but I know. she she knew exactly what what she had to do, and and she she was denied I think probation four times before she actually got out, but now she she's out and she's doing well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just cannot see it. <laughs> I can't see it. Yeah. But can you imagine yeah. the warden mm -hmm. coming to your cell? Nice and cheerful I like this. I will say, I will say, I'm trying to hide the shank, the phone, <laughs> look, the weed. I know the where it's at. I'm telling you, I know where it's at. Well, look, I, know all the, I know all the spots. Don't be kind of run up in here like that. Wow. <laughs> I know all the spots. So tell me about the book. Well, the book, Pretty Firecracker, it, it basically, I believe in journaling. And uh, that's something that I stress with the women and even me and anybody, you know, and I just, people locked up but anybody you know that's the way to express yourself that's the way to tell your story that's the way to just open up and so it it kind of just started off as just journaling um things that I was going through just how to overcome and so the title pretty firecracker is it's basically you know what it says like you know how a firecracker kind of like just erupts so it's like basically you know you see a pretty face and you just don't know what's inside you know and if you hold and keep all that stuff inside what happens it erupts so it just talks about not keeping things inside and how to handle problems and situations before you get to that point where you feel like you can't um do nothing but explode mm. so it's just basically saying you you can never judge a book by its color you never know what a person is going through inside i like the the format of the book because you got yeah. quotes you got space for j yeah. your own journaling to reflect. you got Cause questions I feel like that's, that's very important like because i would read stuff and then i might think and be like wow you know so i thought like it was good to just where you can kind of reflect and write something in between the chapters and stuff like that that's yeah. dope. Where is the book available? The book is available on Amazon, Amazon.com, and also BarnesandNoble.com. You can just put in Pretty Firecracker. I see you got a lot mm -hmm. of scriptures in here. Do you yes. have a favorite? Yes. Uh, Psalms 46 and 10, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Like, that is one that I, I live by. Like, because so many times we just... 
go, 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 go. And we never just take a minute to pause and just reflect on what we're doing in life, where we want to go in life, and just what's happening in general. So that taught me to just be still and just wait on God. When I don't know what way I'm going, what decision I need to, to make, or just what's next, you know, I think, I reflect, and I just be still and wait on God. Well, you know, we have a very large audience of mm -hmm. people who are watching the black mm -hmm. market right now. Mm -hmm. What if somebody wanted to reach out to you and be part of the things that you have going mm -hmm. on inside of the juvenile facilities, yes. inside of the adult facilities? Mm -hmm. How can they latch on and be a part of this movement that you're building? Okay, I'm glad you asked that. Well, I actually, um, a direct reflection of the book, I just um, found it. It's prettyfirecrackerfoundation.org. And it's, it's recent, so my website is under construction. That's but however, that's giving back to um, those incarcerated or previously incarcerated to like help them cross any type of barriers that's keeping them from moving ahead. Whether it's, it may be small things, like it may be like um, an old bill that they need to pay, a red, like an application fee, um, um, dress for success, like needing clothes to go for a job interview and things like that. Um, so, but right now, if anybody wants to reach me, I can be reached at uh, prettyfirecracker at yahoo.com. I wanted to ask you this, from somebody who's been in an authority position on mm -hmm. the other side of mm -hmm. their wall, mm -hmm. what advice or what would you say to the family members mm -hmm. of people who are incarcerated? How can they help them or how can they make that time easier for their loved ones? How can they help them cope? Like what are the things, you know, some, some of this shit is new to some people. Yeah, they don't know when to reach out or how to reach out or it how is. to keep that, co that communication open. One of the biggest things <clears throat> that, that I see, even from, you know, from being in a, from moving up all the way, you know, to where I was, is just being available and not lying, you know, because people joke all the time about them putting their money on their book, you know. And, and that's real, like them being able to buy a drink or a soda or a pack of noodles or, you know, it's real. And the things that people have to go through to get those things when they have nobody, you know, people go in debt trying to just feed themselves, you know, and, and just just being available. And if you say you're going to do something, do it. You know, if you can't do it, just say you can't do it because then they're not going to be expecting it. You got it. people behind the wall got, depending on you. Yeah, you got them depending on you. You got them expecting or looking and see, you know, if you're going to do this or do that. You know, you telling them you're going to show up for visitation and they dress ready, never show up. You know, we have to deal with that on the back end because guess what? Then they're going to be mad. You know, then they're going to be upset. We had majority of our population was on the mental health caseload. Like mm -hmm. over probably almost 80%. Not saying that all of them was on like also, high too. dosages, but they were on some type of medication. How just do you to feel as the person who has to deal with that? Mm -hmm. When you're knowing that it's people who don't need to be in jail, mm -hmm. they really need to be in a facility. Like, yeah. And that falls back on you. Like, what is It does. It does. And that would lead me to um, now in my prior position and what I'm doing now and it was a big big position I'm sorry a big decision for me to even leave correction but I keep talking to you like you're still up there my bad. well you're good <laughs> it, it, I've been like maybe a year removed right. but it was very stressful um and it was a lot of things you know internally like on the executive level that people don't even know that's going on right um so I just kind of was like let me just put myself out there a little bit just to see you know what's out there and the position that I am in now, it actually, um, I'm the vice president of domestic violence services for the YWCA of Nashville and Middle Tennessee. And that so, just sounds so serious. <laughs> that just sounds extremely it, well, it's serious. Well, it's a, it's a serious issue. Like, you know, domestic That's violence. That's right, because these women out here beating these men yeah. ass, and ain't nobody saying <laughs> nothing. No, you know just. what? And it's, it, it go, it vice versa. Like, you know, it, it does. It goes both ways. But um, in this position, we have the, lar the largest DV shelter in um, Tennessee. So it's a 65 bed shelter. And so any woman that's fleeing domestic violence and need immediate shelter, they can come to us. We give them, I mean. What's the info on they that? They can come. Um, YWCA, Nashville, Middle Tennessee. Um, we have a, a text hotline. We have a 1-800 uh, hotline. I think I have my card in my pocket. I don't know it off top. But yeah, so the crisis hotline number is 1-800-334-4628.
But um, I say that to say, I'm actually, I've been working with uh, the DA in Nashville. And so we had to go through this extensive process of trying to get this new pilot diversion program. And it's solely for when women come through or domestic violence victims, it could be men. When they come through and they see, oh man, they have gotten this charge because of a domestic violence situation, whether it's trafficking, whether it's they were sent out to prostitute, whether they were, you know, trying to steal to eat because it's a financial, you know, uh, a barrier there. If they realize that it's due to domestic violence, they then will divert them, you know, to me and my organization where we can, it's almost like rehab them instead of sending them straight to prison. Because I don't know the exact percentage, but I know 60, it, it has to be 60, at least 60% of those women have suffered traumatic experiences due to domestic violence. And a lot of them have charges due to it. Mm. So we're going to just follow them to see if we can rehabilitate them, get them a job, give them parenting classes, you know, sign them up for, you know, financial coaching just to all the way around the board, things that they need to work on to make them a better person, to empower them, to let them know, hey, you know, it's help out here that you can get. And so out of probably almost 30 states that applied, Nashville was number one. So I'm, I'm proud about that. I got one more question. Mm -hmm. When did you know it was time to transition to something else? I knew it was time to transition to something else when I started wearing it every day, like once I went home. Um, the stress, um, uh, some of it was the administration, like things that I had kind of no control of. And it's like it was starting to, um, I was just starting to wear it every day. Getting harder and harder to it, decompress it, it and it was, leave it at work. It was, it was. And it's, it's a very, you know, stressful job. And I yeah, would have, I would have people every day just like, turn off. You know, you work in a prison, you you do this, you do that. And I'm like, yeah, but I've always been a, a strong believer in you respect them, they'll respect you. In all my years, I have never had an incident where, like, I was scared, I was threatened, none of that. Even with men, I've never had, you know, anybody disrespect me or come at me the wrong way. Because, I mean, I feel like they know who to take that to, you know. They know the people that they can get over on. They know the guards who they can get to you know bring stuff in and all they know who to target and like i'm not the one there's mm. another side i'm telling you but you i don't want to see that side <laughs> i like this side right here the pretty firecracker yes. Miss dr yes. daphne darcell yes. drop your email yes. one more time so they can pretty firecracker at yahoo.com well and so yeah i also you know speak in a community i go i'll be in memphis next next week i'll be in alabama i think the week after that but I'm a motivational speaker. I speak in the community. I just, you know, like to drop gym, gyms just to empower, you know, anyone out there. You know, like I work in domestic violence now. I'm a DB survivor, so I, I speak on that as well. It's, it's just, I just serve. You know, I consider myself being a servant leader and, and just whatever God has for me, you know, I just live a life to try to walk in that. Well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know this is your first time yes. coming on the black market. Mm -hmm. Don't let it be the last. Mm -hmm. Go tell my boy Project Pat I sure that we're ready to have him on the show. I sure will. And I sure will. That's it he'll, right he'll there. Be here. So, and so I, I got something for you, too. What you got? Yeah. I brought you a book. Stop playing. I did. You brought this for me? Yes, I did. And you know. You're the best. We're going to get you in some good trouble. Come on now. Now when yeah. I'm the warden, I'm going to be sitting yeah. in there like this, <laughs> reading my Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I really, let you know. Let him out. <laughs> let him out. Let him out. <laughs> Seriously, let him out. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. you. You helping me with yeah. my sophistication. Yeah. I, I just, really it's appreciate It's just a blessing you. that you all do this and let, you know, people like myself and others just be able to showcase the things that they do and, and just give back to the community. So thank you all for yeah, having Yeah, I feel me. like it was important to have this kind of platform mm -hmm. for us to have this many watchers yeah. and, and listeners and lookers. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to see us mm -hmm. doing things in the community. Yes. I want those people mm -hmm. that reach out to hit you and mm -hmm. 
with yeah. those organizations because yes. we have you know we have a lot of people come through here throughout yes. the year and it's just mm -hmm. good to just be building mm -hmm. a network mm -hmm. of people who you know are mm -hmm. doing things to push the yes. culture forward so very much so and especially with you being in tennessee <laughs> we be in tennessee all the time yes. you, you really Look, good people. i'm telling you, you really now, good people. i believe you in networks like, yeah now, i know so. dr daphne yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell us the 85 south show we down here and uh we need her to come up here work yes, right quick i will be there yeah and it's crazy that he's here. We haven't saw each other since high school. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, it's just a blessing. This guy. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Dr. Darcel. Yes. We appreciate you coming Thank through you. the black market. <laughs> Damn that. Thank you.